This is the Squire Sonic Series Esquire H in Alpine White. Maple fretboard, maple neck, it's got a poplar body, one volume, one tone, one single humbucker that measures around 8.5, 8.2 K ohms, and it is a top loader, and it comes with your typical Squire sealed tuners. Just got this out of the box, and gonna give you a rundown of the things that I've noticed already. It does have some sharp fret ends. I don't think it's fret sprout, but I just think it's the crowns just need to be uh, smoothed out just a hair. The radius is a nine and a half inch fretboard radius, and I don't think the saddles are quite there. It's gonna benefit from a good setup. The frets are narrow, tall, and they do feel like they could really benefit from a, a good polishing, a nice smooth polishing, especially on the lighter strings, you can kind of feel them scraping. The neck feels like your typical, it almost feels like it's unfinished. It's supposed to be a satin poly, but it feels more unfinished. It doesn't mean it's not, it's just, it's just a satin poly that's just, it's a very light coat. And going forward, I think I might do something with that because while this is a beginner's or an entry level guitar, it's a great modding platform. It's a nice, like I said, it's a popper body, so it's nice and light. It's thin, about as thin as the Affinity line, and not nearly as thick as regular Tele. I like the Tele body style because it's comfortable to play, and I've been intrigued by the Esquire because it's a single pickup. Now, this is a single humbucker, so this is more my style, and mainly when I play, I play in the bridge. So when they came out with this, it caught my eye, and I like the maple fretboard. I like the color. They do have another one in a purple grape bubblegum color that's just not my style. And it comes with a laurel fretboard, which I haven't been a big fan of in the bullet line. So I don't think I would like it in the Sonic series line. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take it over to the bench. We're gonna open up the electronics cavity and the hood and see what's going on under here because other people have asked in other videos, well, is it routed out for another humbuck or another single coil? Well, we're gonna find out and we're gonna find out how deep this is and see if you could actually modify it and put a switch in it and see what we got going on. Let's go. I got a decent enough angle here and you can get a good look and the lighting is good. So we're going to answer first the question of let's see what's under the hood here. See how much room we have to work with if we wanted to let's say put a switch in there, different plate, different pots. So before we do that why don't we try to pop these knobs off without scratching up too much so we can see what they are. Assume this is an 11 millimeter, and I assumed correctly. So I'm just going to loosen that one up. It's cheap chrome, so there's already a ton of fingerprints on here. And if we're not careful, we'll probably end up scratching that up too. Whenever you're using power tools on a guitar, especially with something like popular wood, you need to be careful because you can even strip it, taking them out. If you take the screws out too fast, you put too much pressure on it. Now that we got it here, let's see what's going on. Wow. You've got all sorts of room in there. That is, that is nice and deep. You could fit probably an Oaks Grisby uh, three-way switch or a five-way switch, whatever you want to do there. It doesn't look like it's shielded very well, but I mean, you got all sorts of room in there if you want to put some fatter switches. Let's see what I got here. A big old. 500 pot might be a tight fit. It's deep enough that you can put a three-way, a regular American style switch in there. How about these 500K pots? There's room for a 500K pot. Now this one, I don't know. This is a, a push-pull CTS pot. That might be a little tighter fit. I do have another push-pull here. And you got plenty of room in there to put one of these push pulls. Let's check out this capacitor on here and see what kind of pot we're working with. 
Now it's a humbucker, so it should be a 500 and not a 250, and it should be a 223 capacitor and not a uh, 437. So let's see. It looks to be. It says made in Korea Alpha, and it is an Alpha 500K. You can't see it right there unless I zoom in. I can't do two things at once here. So it is an Alpha 500K, and the capacitor appears to be. 223. So as far as specs go, that's about right for a humbucker. That's not about right, it is right. That's what I prefer to use anyway, a 500 with a 223 for humbuckers. Let's put that back on there so I don't feel losing anything. So now that we've looked under the hood there, let's see what we're working with under the pick guard. The great thing about this is, since there's no pickups on it, We'll be able to unscrew that and slide it right out and see what we got going on here. And while I got this off here, I'm going to take the plastic off this pick guard. This is the moment of truth. What have we got going on underneath the pick guard? Something's routed. And there you go. It's routed for a full size humbucker. If you wanted to get another pick guard, Sort of like this. Let's see how this one fits. I'm not going to put this one on here because it just doesn't match the guitar really well. It doesn't look too bad. But if I wanted to put a mini under there, I could, but it doesn't quite fit this one. It's made for more like a vintage bridge. So that one doesn't quite fit. But yeah, you can put a mini humbucker or if you get the right pick guard, maybe a bullet telecaster pick guard. That would fit under there very well. Get the plastic off here. But that's really cool that it's uh, everything's routed here, and you could easily make this an HH Telecaster instead of the Esquire H. Pretty groovy. Put these screws back together, and since we've seen everything, let's see how it sounds. We've heard some simple sound samples and here are my final thoughts on this guitar. It is a $200 guitar. It is a decent entry level guitar and a great modding platform. It could benefit from some better tuners because the tuners are a little bit jerky and maybe some affordable Gotos would uh, make it a little bit better. I'm going to change the pickup. I'm going to do a little refinishing on the neck here. Maybe put a little bit of true oil on the fretboard. The Sonic series is going to be replacing the Bullet series and Squire has kind of stepped up their game on this one giving more varieties more colors and different variations of the bullet line. I'm sorry to see the bullet line go as it's been a tradition for many years as the lower end of the Squire series, but times have changed and they wanna make it more appealing not only to beginning players, but also to female players. And that's why I think we're seeing more of the pink and purplish and bluish pastels in this line. So if you are a beginner or a modder for that matter, and you want a simple, cheap guitar that you can put a little work into and make a great player, the Sonic series might be the way to go. I'm definitely gonna make a player out of this and you're probably gonna see it in more of my videos, especially my tone tutorials. That's gonna wrap it up. I hope you liked this video and learned something about the new Sonic series from Squire. And if you like this video, hit that like button for me. And if you wanna subscribe, by all means, hit that subscribe button too. We'll see you next time.